Thank you, Colin, and good morning, everyone. I'm Brian Fleetfoot. I'm a Deputy General Counsel at the Department overseeing our income tax policy area. Um, and as many of you know, Alexis Overstreet and I and our very hardworking staffs have been sharpening our pencils and cranking out a bunch of new rules and amendments to rules um, in response to legislative changes that Richard talked about, but also doing some general cleanup to sections that haven't been touched in um, many years. Um, and you'll find a list of that of all those rules in your packet. I'm not going to go through them, but I'm happy to entertain any questions you have regarding any of those rules. Um, but what I wanna focus on during my time is just to kind of give you a statistical analysis of what's been occurring at the tax tri tribunal. Um, because I think there's some, some sort of a sentiment developing that it's not, um, a taxpayer favorable body. And I think if you look at the statistics, that doesn't bear out. Um, so as you may recall, the tax tribunal was created in 2013 and started taking cases in 2014. Um, and this is just a list of all of the decisions, final decisions. I excluded all of the interim motions for partial summary judgment on discovery disputes and all of that. But if you can find all of these on the Tax Tribunal's website, and these are all the final decisions that have been issued. And um, if you do the math, you will find that the department prevailed in 19 of these decisions, taxpayers prevailed in six, and one was a split decision. Um, but if you look at the decisions that were appealed, and a very small number were, and I would note that in each of the cases where the department did not pre prevail, we opted not to appeal. Now, that may change in the future, but in, in these particular cases, we accepted our loss and moved, and, and moved on. Um, but when it went to the appellate court, it's been mixed results. Um, there's three pending right now. It, the, uh, the PepsiCo case that Colin mentioned, American Aviation Supply, which involves a refund claim on aviation fuel, um, applying the burnoff rule. Um, and then you have um, Midwest Med Medical Equipment Solutions, which you know, is a very complicated uh, issue regarding uh, the governmental exemption. Uh, the payment has to come directly from the government. So when the, the, the state government and, and, and Medicaid, in this case, started subcontracting out its uh, dealings with uh, pro providers, we determined that that wasn't a direct payment from the government and therefore the deduction did not uh, apply. So that is also pending. Um, but you'll see um, that on appeal, there were Two cases where the liability was upheld that was affirmed, um, and two that were reversed. Um, I'm sorry, three that were affirmed and two that were, were reversed. Um, so I think that indicates that, you know, the, the you still have the, um, the appellate court review, um, and the appellate court is not necessarily deferring to the tax tri tribunal. Um, the other thing I wanna go through is just the number of fi filings by, by year. It started out north of a 250 and it's dwindled down um, to less than 150. Um, and in fact, this year, we're only about 90 cases filed to, 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 to date. Why is that? Um, I think the main reason is you'll recall a few years ago we had an amnesty program. That has a tendency to clear the decks, um, both cases that are pending at the tri tri tribunal but on current audits. Taxpayers come and negotiate the amount of tax that they, that they owe and, and they'll pay it during amnesty and they'll be relieved of all penalties and interest. 
Um, so I think that's probably the main driver of why the cases ha have been, had been down. But you're also getting into kind of recession years, and so taxpayers are generating losses. Um, and our audit adjustments in, in, in end up in loss reductions, and so that's not a protestable issue. Um, so I, I think you, you'll, you'll, you'll see that. But I do know from conversations with our litigation staff, the tribunal judges are very nervous. Because, um, I mean, you, it's kind of hard to go before the General Assembly and justify a budget when your cases are down less, you know, more than half. So we'll see what happens there. Um, and then this breaks it down, the filings by amount. Um, and, you know, when we were um, devising the tax tri tribunal, um, working with uh, pri primarily the, uh, the Illinois State Ch Chamber of Commerce, there, there was a, an issue of where we're going to set the threshold. I mean, we wanted to maintain smaller cases at the Department, Department of Re Revenue. And, you know, our an, an analysis was, you know, you can set the threshold at 50,000, 25,000, it really doesn't matter. All of the cases are gonna be in the 100,000 or more range. And this kind of bears that out. And as you can see though, over time, those um, have been reducing, all except for the 500,000 to um, um, a million. That's sort of the one that's been growing over time. Right. Yes, Jim. I do not have that for you to today, um, although I do have a slide on responsible officer ca cases, um, which you'll see that those are trending down significantly. Um, and I asked Steve, Stephen Hayes, the, the manager of our uh, collections bureau, about if he had any ideas why that was the case. He didn't, but he said he hopes that it's because we're doing a better job of identifying the true responsible officers. Um, and then I want to kind of close by, um, you know, the, the filings have been coming down, but over the case of the existence of the Independent Tax Tribunal, there have been 1,406 cases filed and 24 decisions issued. So that shows you that most of the cases are resolved short of a hearing where the, or a summary judgment motion where the, the tax tribunal has to issue a decision. Most of our cases, as they always have been, you know, you know on, on, on the sales tax side, we, we kind of do uh, what we call agreed re-audits, where we accept some documentation the taxpayers have, but it doesn't meet our standards, so we draw certain inferences and we give them breaks, um, and the taxpayers agree and pay. Um, and then the other ones, the bulk of the other ones, we just resolve through some type of a legal settlement merely because the law isn't it's, you know, ex ex exactly clear, um, or you know, the tax, uh, both parties have viable positions.